Debugging is one of the most important processes in the computer programming and software development. It is the process of detecting and the removing of existing and potential errors in a software code that can cause it to behave unexpectedly or crash. If we are programming in Simple Sharp Pro, we know that we can't debug a code in the Simple Debugger anymore. So we need to find a way to do it. In this tutorial, we will find out how to debug a code in the JetBrains Writer. We will use a backend code from my first tutorial. In the description you can find a GitHub link, so go there and copy it and paste it into the browser. Click on the code and click here to copy this HTTPS link. We will create a new folder on the desktop and call it debug test. Now open the folder and type here cmd. Inside of the command prompt type git clone and now paste the link that you previously copied. Hit enter and wait until the code is cloned. Now open a writer and open the project. JetBrains Rider has implemented a debugging tool called Mono Remote. First, we need to add a configuration by clicking on Add Configuration button, now on this plus button, and choose Mono Remote. Give that configuration a friendly name, it can be anything. Under the host, you can type your processor's hostname or IP address. On the port, you can leave 50,000, unless you have an RMC4 processor. In that case, this port is already reserved, so we will choose 52,000 because I am using RMC4. Click OK. And we are finished with a configuration. The last crucial thing is to set the debugging information to portable. Right click on the project name and choose Properties. If you got the message that editing properties is not supported for this item, you can check my other video where I'm explaining how to fix this problem. The link is in the description below. Under the configuration, click on the debug and under the debug type, change from full to portable. And click OK. Now we are ready to debug. If we want to debug our code, we need to build a solution, then load that program on the processor and turn to debug mode. It is very important that you have the same code running on your processor as well as here in Rider. If you have any slight difference, it will not work. Let's first add breakpoints. For the sake of the example, we can add it here as well as here. So when we will press the button, you will see the process of creating the response, step by step. Now let's build the solution. But be careful here. After the build, it's good to use a rebuild solution, because sometimes you will see in the terminal that the build didn't happen because you already have an up-to-date build. Thus, in some cases, it will not work properly. Let's click on the build. and then rebuild solution. Now we need to do another few steps and for that we will use PowerShell scripts to automate the process. You can find in the description link to two PowerShell scripts that we will use in this tutorial. You need to download and edit them according to the comments that I wrote. 
Before you use them, you need to set up the environment for the Crestron PowerShell scripts. And you can find how this is done in my other video. You can find the link in the description of this video. I will now open the start menu and type PowerShell. You need to choose Run ISC as administrator, as you can see in this picture. Now open the start debugging mode script. If we set up everything correctly, we can now start the script by pressing F5 or clicking on this green triangle button. Wait until the script does the job. In Rider, click on this debug button. And now we can start testing the code. Let's see what will happen when we press green button. You can see that the breakpoint has been triggered. Let's click on the resume. Now let's analyze some variables. We will click on the yellow button. You can see that background color text variable has a value of red. And now you will see that after this step, the text will change to yellow background color. Great! Now if we press green, the process will be the same. Let's click on this step over button. Unlike the return button that jumps on the next breakpoint, this button goes on the next line no matter breakpoints. But let's see what else can we do here. We can find a variable that we want to monitor in the debugger window and flag it, so it will always be at the top of the variables. Let's do it for the background color text variable. Another great feature is set value, and it allows us to manually change the variable in the process of debugging. Let's go change the background color text to black and see if we will see the result on the physical screen. Ok, we can see it here, but what will be after we press resume button? So it works! That's awesome! When we are finished with debugging, we need to stop the mono debugger in the rider and run the script that will tell the processor to exit a debug mode. Let's do it. In rider, click on the stop button. Now let's open another PowerShell script and that is stop debugging mode. Make sure that everything is set up correctly. Now run the script and wait until it's done. And that's it. See you in the next video.